This is the rules overview and solo introduction for Ultra Tiny Epic Kingdoms and it's the ultra ultra small version of the already tiny epic series of games and this is a single box, it's the size of a normal pack of cards but it says on the back, not a card game, think again, uh, it's actually a full 4x game in a box. So 4x if you're not familiar with it is exploring, expanding, exploiting and exterminating your enemies. So inside the box there's enough um, components for one to five players believe it or not and a 45 minute game time so actually managing to fit this in the box is really quite an incredible feat and the artwork's really lovely as well so let's have a look at some of the components because we're interested in solo play so i've set the board up here and the whole board revolves around this compass card so the compass card you'll notice has a day side and a night side and this is the card that effectively runs the AI for the dummy player. And you'll notice that there's a, um, a number 1 to 12, and that corresponds with a 12-sided dice. And that doesn't actually come in the Ultra Tiny Edition, but you can pick these up in a, a tiny RPG dice set off for eBay or Amazon for a couple of pounds. I think I paid two pounds and I got D4 to D20 in with all the dice in there. So we'll come onto the compass card and let's have a look at some of the other components. So we've got our two races. In the rule book, it actually suggests a number of factions that work well in solo mode. Goblins is one of them. So we're going to be playing against the goblins and we're going to be playing as the elves. And the difference between the different races are the different magic tracks. So they allow um, the factions to achieve and unlock different skills. So you go into the goblins at level one. When you patrol, you may move two armies instead of one. And various things happen as they gain uh, more magic. The elves, let's have a quick look at that card. This seems to be revolving around trade and reducing the cost of war. So we'll come on to that in a second. So elves versus goblins, classic matchup. We've got on the board lands, top and bottom. So we'll have, this one is the homeland for the elves, Orkmoor, and this is Ekman stone, which can be the home for the goblins. And these are actually on the back of the race cards. And there's lots of different land types. Um, and there's some really, really nice artwork uh, that accompanies each one. And what I particularly like on these score trackers, on the reverse of these is a little collage of all the different faction types. So that gives you an idea who you can play off, uh, play as in the game. So we have our compass card, which drives the AI. We've got our two factions, our homelands, and we'll go into the land types in a second. Our score trackers, we've got our action list. These are the things you can do each turn. We'll go into that. And we've got the tower, and that's one of the action types, and you can build the tower and rise to the top. Now, how do you actually win this game? Well, you win by having the most victory points, and victory points are shown anywhere where you've got one of these crowns. And the game ends when one of a few different things happened. Either you've got all your armies in play, the armies in this particular game are represented by these little cubes. If you reach the top, of the magic track the game ends and if you reach the top of the tower track the game ends so they're the ways that the game will stop and then you count up victory points so i've chosen specifically two different land types here just so that we can have a look at the different types now these sort of crags here will stop um, movement between the different terrains so we have food uh, planes which can give food which is the yellow token we have forests which can give mana the green token and we have mountains which can give ore and these are used for various things in the game now on this particular card we have crags which block play we've got water which prevents you from moving over water you have to move around it and we've also got this which i believe is called the wasteland and that actually allows you to generate either food, mana, or ore. On Ogmore, the elves' homeland in this game, we've got, again, mountains for ore, mana, uh, plains for food. We've also got a city. Now, this doesn't actually generate any resources, but it does give you two victory points at the end of the game, unlike the wasteland, which can generate any kind of um, resource, but um, no victory points if you land on that at the end of the game. So we've got ourselves set up, we just need to deploy our tokens now. 
So let's get that set up. The dummy play, goblins in this case, starts with three of each resource. And just like in the full uh, multiplayer game, you can place, um, the human player can place their tokens in whichever order they like. Now, the I'll decide that in a second because we'll need to place the starting armies. Now, the goblins are going to start with one army in either a forest or a mountain, and the elves are going to choose two in any one. That's standard for the human player. So I'm going to start with two in the mountains. So, seeing as I've got a ready, um, ready place to get ore, I'm only going to start with one ore. Uh, I think we're going to go with two food and one mana. And it'll become apparent what all these are used for as the game goes on. So we just need to scatter around the remainder um, tokens. So we're going to have one on the um, score track, on the war cost. We're going to have one next to our magic track and we're going to have one of each on the level next to here, level zero, and the remainder of them is our pool of armies which we can uh, expand and put into play. So the human player starts first and in order to uh, show who's, who's starting they give us a little uh, player token. So we'll put that next to us. Now I can choose any of the actions. So it's a good time now to go through the actions. And I'll start from bottom to top. Trade, if you choose that, you can swap any of your tokens for any others, easy. Expand means you pay um, food, so they're the yellow, um, yellow tokens, equal to the number of armies you have. So at present I have two armies. If I wanted to expand, I'd need to pay three food because that will give me three armies. If I had five armies in play and I wanted to go to six, it cost me six food. Research is the green and by spending mana we can advance the magic track and learn new skills. Build is exactly the same. So in, in build you spend ore and ore is thematically used for the stone in building the tower. So the number shown to reach each level is on these cards here. So one for the first, five for the last. Remembering that if you hit the top level on any of these cards, the game ends and you count up your victory points. So we also have quest and patrol, which we'll come on to. So that's the setup of the game. We'll now take a look at the basic gameplay and we'll play from turn one, but there will be a full playthrough in a different video. So onto the gameplay, that way um, hopefully what will happen is patrol and quest will come up and we'll get a chance to um, to do that. In fact, let's start with that. So the uh, the human player starts first and they choose an action. So I'm going to choose pat patrol and what patrol means is to move anywhere between the regions on your card. So I'm still in a phase where I'm uh, interested in gathering resources at the moment. So rather than move to the castle, which doesn't allow me to gather anything, I'm just going to patrol to the uh, the forest, so I've split my um, my base between mountains and forests. Now, in the standard game, the other players get a chance to follow. In the solo player, in the solo game, the dummy player always follows. So, how on earth do we find out which um, which army moves and where they move to? So, this is where the compass card comes in. So, at this point, we are going to use the um, the d12 and we roll a one. So one means that we look at the direction of the arrow and it actually misses all of the uh, all the players. So we just count round and the first um, army that it hits is this. So this one is gonna be the one that patrols and it just patrols one in any given direction. In fact, let's just double check that it is any given direction, patrol is a dummy army will not move into a region that already has one, so it couldn't move to there, uh, but it will move into a region with an enemy. So actually we only had one choice there because we couldn't move into the crags, we couldn't move into the mountains, so we have to move 
into the planes. So we've copied and also that action is now effectively blocked for the rest of the turn. So it's the dummy's play. So what does the dummy player do? Well, again, we roll the d12 and we get an 11 and 11 says patrol and we can't patrol so that's already happened so we move clockwise one so it's going to expand so expand uh, the dummy player when it expands if the dummy player is able they will discard the number of food necessary to create a new army this army is not placed with an existing army but rather in an open region adjacent to one of their armies use the compass to select a region where the dummy army is placed now there is a little quirk of the game which says you only roll the dice once for a turn so we're going to expand so on the goblins tracker they need three armies so they're going to spend three food and they're going to get a new army in play and it goes in the direction of the compass now we've already rolled we had an 11 that's here so it looks like that army is going to be placed there i have the option to follow that i might want to expand as it happens i can't because i don't have enough so what I can do, if I choose, is to collect resources. And to collect resources, I have one army. I have one occupied space here and one here, so I get one um, ore resource and one mana resource, and it's my turn. So I'm looking pretty good on mana at the moment, so I think it's time to do some research. And I'm gonna research and I'm gonna gain the first level. Now the first level is gonna show us that when I trade, I may get to trade both ore or food, ore and food, to get uh, green in the same turn. So it basically opens up some of my trade options. So normally you can only trade one type. Um, so I'm on the magic track, and that's my turn. So the um, the goblins will follow that, and they will spend one to advance to the first track and they gain the skill when you patrol you may move two armies instead of one so it looks like they're quite an aggressive uh, attacking race so on to the goblins we're going to roll and we've got a one so that's research and research has already happened so next along in the track is trade. So let's just check the rules for trade. Trade is really quite simple um, for the dummy player. Basically, they just gain one of each resource type, which is pretty good. So to do that, they're just going to move back up to one, or up to four on the others. Uh, I'm wondering if I'm going to trade. I don't think I am, so I'm just going to choose to collect um, resources. You know, actually, I am going to trade. So I'm going to trade a mana and gain a food. So that's the end of that turn. And what I should have been doing is swapping back the player token, but it's really not that difficult to remember. So my turn again. I've only got a few options left. So... I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand. So to expand, I've now got my three, so I can exhaust my food. I can add another uh, army, and I'm going to put that in play there. And it's the uh, the turn of the goblins to follow me. So I chose to expand. Um, they can't do that because they don't have enough um, food to do so, so they're going to collect resources. So they're going to get one of each, which is pretty good. So next, um, it is the goblins' turn, and I just marked out the trade because they did that the other turn. So roll the dice again. We get a nine. A nine says build. Um, so, build they will, and to build, it's just literally going to cost one, um, one ore, so that gets deducted one, and even though they could further go on, you can only level up one, either magic or tower level, 
as you go. So um, I'm going to follow that. That's a sensible move to follow, and I'll spend my ore. So last one is build happens. So what happens now when this is is full? It gets cleared, and you'll notice that on the compass card we've got a little bit of a rule here that says. Flip this card um, when when you exhaust the uh, the action list, and your opponent collects one of each rod. So it goes to the knight side, and they're going to gain one of each resource. Sadly, so there we have it. Okay, differences between day and night are uh, obviously there's an action when you flip the clear. Uh, when you clear the uh, the actions, you, you flip the card, but also it changes selection priority. So in the daytime, selection priority is near. In the nighttime, selection priority is far. So in this particular case, let's suppose we'd come up um, around 11 here. So in the daytime, we'd select this one. In the nighttime, we would select the far one. That's the only difference there. The other thing is the cost of war. Now, war happens when... Um, two armies end up clashing for the same space. They can't settle in this game. There's no truce or alliances that can be made, so they have to fight. Um, so that gets resolved by the cost of war, and that determines the cost of war for um, the dummy player. So it basically is easier to beat the dummy player at night than it is during the day, which is a nice touch. Okay, so we've cleared the card, and it's the human player now will flip to the night side and basically you repeat in that manner now one thing that I haven't done is just go through war so I'll quickly do that now so it's my turn and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to quest and quest is a bit like patrol you can move around except you move off the card now the only way you can move off the card is by um, moving a piece next to the edge onto another land type next to the edge. So I could choose here, but for the sake of showing a war, um, what we'll do is we'll move here. Now, this says the war cost is the number of armies times one. So the dummy player's got one, two, three, so they've got a, a war cost of three, and that's what these tracks along the top are. So I need to spend four effectively to beat the um, to beat the dummy player so one two three four now the dummy player never pays war cost unless they actually have to retreat I do pay war cost so to pay you'll notice on these cards it's two so I was paid for one there and I'll spend one ore there, so I can actually only reach two. In a real game, that'd be a totally stupid move. I've just entered into a war that I know I can't possibly win, so you wouldn't do that. But that's effectively how you resolve the cost. So in this case, it'd be me that would have to retreat back. Now, in a real game, you just wouldn't do that. You'd make sure you had sufficient points that you could merrily invade, beat the cost, and then force the dummy player to move. So that's a quick overview of ultra tiny epic kingdoms fantastic game you've got the basic gist of it enough to get started but do have a look at some of our uh, playthrough videos and i think what i'll do is i'll reset this game and um, we'll play it out and see who's the winner